So I've got my own site, victorsart.info, and you, uh, a, a bunch of you have already sent me your email with your address. Some of you haven't, so remember to send that to me just so that I have it. Uh, and I was actually looking at GoDaddy earlier today just to see the number of different extensions, because I've got victorsart.info, and then there's the .com, there's .net, there's a bunch of them, right? Uh, there's actually one called .ninja, which I didn't know until I looked it up today. So you can get victor.ninja as your website. And there's like a thousand of them now. There just was .com for a long time, .net, .org, and now there's a bunch of them. Like .info, .ninja, .art, .biz, on and on and on. So uh, we were running out of domain names perhaps, and now there's a whole bunch of them to choose from. So if you are interested in one of those names, if you never got victorcampos.com, you might be able to get victorcampos.ninja. I'd be a little embarrassed, but uh, I could I could get it at least. So um, what we're going to do for a little bit is my site still looks the same as when I first set it up in GoDaddy. Uh, and probably yours too, because we haven't really done anything with it. What we're going to do is just take a little bit of time to, to look at our GoDaddy site and um, remind you of a few things. Uh, and then it'll be up to you to decide basically, do you want to do what I'm about to show you, which is to import your site from WordPress.com into your new site, or do you want to start over? And at this point, we're not so far along on WordPress.com that it'd be a big tragedy to lose what we've got there. But I'll show you how to import it if you want, uh, or if you uh, want the challenge or the fun or the skill of it, you can create your site again from the beginning now that you've got a brand new canvas to work with. So I've got my website, and remember, uh, you should go to your website, and you should go to the login screen, not the GoDaddy one, where we've kind of graduated from that. You want to go to your website's login screen, which the default is the name of your website, slash wp-admin. So that's the default login screen. Go ahead and log in to your site so it's going to be the name of your site slash wp-admin and then go ahead and log in with your credentials now we still have wordpress.com and it's still useful because we've got jetpack connected to our site and what Jetpack does is it allows us to get a lot of the capabilities that uh, WordPress.com has built in that your own GoDaddy site does not. So that's one of the things that we did last. Remember, we set up a few plugins. One of them was the Jetpack plugin. And I'm seeing if I scroll down here on my on my welcome screen, I'm seeing at the very bottom site stats. That's one of the things that is not included with uh, with a, a default. Uh, WordPress site that is self-hosted stats so here I'm getting the stats from wordpress.com so apparently people have visited my site a couple of times in the last uh, I don't know week or so uh, you might have more traffic does anyone see any traffic on their site on this little thing right here okay cool now I also see here on the left side I've got two comments and I get a preview in my welcome screen here of, of the comments as well. And just by taking a quick look at them, they're spam. You know, I got my hopes up, but they're spam. And uh, they're, but they're not visible on my site yet until I, uh, I deal with them. So does anyone have any comments that are on their dashboard right there? Same ones. Same ones also? Yeah. Spammy also? Yeah. Okay. Brittany? Uh, so Brittany Spears is checking up our sites, I guess. So notice here what you could do is if you hover over any of these uh, comments right away, you've got the option to approve, reply, edit, spam it, or trash it. So I would say spam it. Don't just trash it, because if you trash it, that is not really telling Jetpack, technically a kismet, to deal with future versions of this spam. So I would recommend to spam, to send to spam anything that looks like spam. And this is the kind of... Um, uh, comments that I'm seeing more often that these spam bots are getting a little smarter. They used to be so obviously badly written and broken English and just gibberish. And now this is kind of like, 
I came to your Hello World, Victor's art page, and I noticed you could have a lot more visitors. If I was not a web-savvy person, I would say, yeah, I do want more visitors to my site. Let me click here and see what it's about. But as you see more of these spam comments, you'll see that they're obviously spam. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in the spam box. They never showed up on my site because we had set up our feature to moderate comments. Now, on the top left, I see a spot that says Updates 2, and I see this little spinning arrow that says <coughs> 2. So I've got two updates. Do you guys see any updates up there also? All right, so if you do, let's check it out. Go ahead and click either where it says Updates in your dashboard or that little spinning arrow that's always visible. So those that number up there could be showing a variety of updates and basically you have three big kinds of updates you have updates for WordPress itself which is the foundation to your whole site you've got plugins which add the extra features to your site you could also have updates to themes which change the look of your site of course so mine is saying I, I don't have any new WordPress updates itself, the core WordPress, so I'm fine there. Um, but I am listed that I have three plugin updates. Mine says that I've got a Kismet and I've currently got version 304, and currently we've got 311. So you may or may not see that, that's okay. It says I've got Jetpack and I'm using 3.3.2, and the current one is 3.4. And then WordPress SEO 1.733, and it's on 1.74. So different versions of the plugins seem to be available. My advice about plug about updates, specifically plugins, is do the updates that are incremental. Um, those are safer to do than the big ones. What I mean by incremental is I've got 3.0.4, and the new one is 3.1. Point one. That's an incremental one. It's a small change. If it was 3.0 to 4.0, that's a big change there. So the whole numbers oftentimes means there's much bigger changes to your plugin or your theme or, or WordPress. Those kinds of changes, those kinds of updates, those are the ones that I wouldn't quite do until I know that they will work on my site. Um, how do I know they work? Well, all of these have these buttons here to check the documentation, to check the update, the, the details. So if I see, okay, what's new with Akismet? If I click on view the details, it'll give me uh, a pop-up that tells me what's new. 3.1 released on the 17th, that was yesterday. Improvements to the remove comment author URL JavaScript includes the pingback pre-check from the 2.6 branch. And then I can keep going back, use HTTPS by default, and so forth. So these updates are telling me what has changed, and um, I need to read those changes because a change might conflict with another plugin or a theme. So it's always a good idea to read these, and sometimes they're technical, but if they sound, like I said, a big, a big version change, like when it was from version 2.6 up to 3.0, that might have been a big change move the settings menu, drop the status menu, those are big changes. So, um, as I said, I recommend small updates when they come up, and then big updates, you should really do research to see if it will behoove you to make the changes. I think these here are fine, so I'm going to, um, I could do an update right now, but also um, as I said, it could, it could change your site a lot. So one of the reasons we installed this duplicator plugin is to make a backup of the site, a perfect backup of the site at this point before any changes. So maybe you might feel more comfortable. These changes probably won't be a problem if we update them. But to be safer, we can create a duplicator backup, which makes a perfect copy of your site, and then do the updates, and then if we discover that the, that the updates messed up our site, we can bring our site back with Duplicator. It's a little bit more advanced than I want to get into, but at least we can do this. Um, 
Let's go to your duplicator menu here. Just uh, click on it. Click duplicator. Mine says I don't have any packages found. That's fine if yours does say something. But at the top we've got packages and we've got create new. So I'm going to click create new. And this will give me a screen where it's where it will let me create a new duplicator backup. Uh, it might already have it filled in for you. If it does have some things filled in, especially the an older date, I would recommend you click on this reset button. I'm going to click it anyway. That's just to uh, reset the screen so that it's making a brand new duplicate archive. And I can give myself a note here saying uh, before updates. And I can mark here a kismet. Um, what is the other one? Jetpack, I think. And um, there's a kismet jetpack and one more update. Make it midget. Oh, and WordPress SEO. So in my case, I need to do these updates eventually. So uh, WordPress SEO. So here I'm making myself uh, a duplicator archive. This is going to make an exact copy of my site. If something goes wrong, I can bring my site back. So I'll select Next. It'll scan my site. Uh, I don't have any warnings or errors here. That's good. All of these say good. Did anyone get any warnings or errors if you got to the screen here? Question. I've got uh, Voice being available now when I can see um, updates of working. Your whole site is unavailable? Yes. Just so now I have maintained thingy, steady, can't access anything anymore. Hmm, Again, okay. if I go click the back button, but I can't click anything. I keep getting the Voice being unavailable. Did that happen after and, you tried to do an update? Yeah, after I clicked the button and did the updates on the top one. Ah, uh, OK. Um, let me help you during the lab time. Uh, what we need to do is turn off maintenance mode manually. That happens rarely, but what happened, the plugin, the plugin got confused and it put your site into maintenance mode and didn't take it off. Uh -huh. So we'll be able to take it off, but we'll do it during lab. Uh, so here I'm going to make a, uh, the archive. It says scan complete. Everything seems to look good. I'm going to click build. What that will do is put my site into maintenance mode. If someone tries to come to my site at this moment, it might be unavailable. There might be a message uh, because the site has to be kind of paused, and then this archive will be made. I'll show you that in a moment. And then that'll be a copy of our site. When we do uh, updates for plugins and themes and so forth, the same things happen. Uh, that your site goes into maintenance mode, so no one can go to your site and make changes and stuff to your site. So it puts it in maintenance mode while the updates happen. Sometimes we have a little bad luck, but there's ways to fix that. So if you're building this package, depending how many pictures you have and how many screens you have and how much content, this could take a while. Or uh, if you have a kind of basic site, it will um, create the archive pretty quickly. So I'll just wait a little bit more for mine here. And this is a procedure that I do for real clients also. Uh, if we need to make big changes to their site, we make a duplicator archive just so that we have a backup of it, and then um, do some changes and so forth just in case to have that backup. And if any problems persist, we can bring the archive back. So if you were doing the duplicator backup, uh, did anyone get the successful result? Couple people, okay. That's good. So we'll wait right there for a moment. If it doesn't work on mine, that's okay. I'll move on in just a moment. Okay, there it is. So it took 101 seconds. And my site is this. So basically, my site has been converted into two files this installer file and then a zip file. 
my whole site is in that archive, that zip. And what I will use then is that installer file to bring it back. But uh, what I want to do here, if you have a zip, if you have a flash drive, you should click the installer button and what it'll do is it'll either ask you to save this file or just download it. But um, it's asking me, what would you like to do with this installer.php file? I'm going to say, I'm going to select to save it for the moment on the desktop. If I have a flash drive, I can put it in there. And also select to download the archive. That's going to give me a file with a huge name, .zip. I'll save it to the desktop. And now if I look at the desktop, I've got these two files. I got these two files. This installer file, which is what we would use to resurrect our site, and then the zip file, which has our site. You never have to unzip that file. You're not going to get anything useful out of it. What you will use is this installer PHP file. And how do you use it exactly? Well, it is a, a little technical. Uh, we would have to upload it back to our site. And let's say I uploaded it and I would go to Victor's start uh, Victor's art.info slash installer.php and then there would be a procedure there that says okay put in your password and put in the name of your site and, and whatever and then it'll bring back the site so it does take a few steps it is a little involved I'll give you a handout that will help <coughs> you with that uh, but at least if you've got this backup file that it created for you you've got a backup of your site and there's been times when I was first starting off with WordPress years ago that I, I wish I had that because uh, you know clients would break their site or the server would malfunction and their site would be gone and because a WordPress site exists in the cloud they you don't have a copy of it really unless you make one manually like that so once I've got this copy here now I feel safer going back to my updates and uh, usually it's fine to select, to do select all here and let all of these plugins update. If I select them all and then select update plugins, usually it works fine, except when it doesn't. And it has happened to me that everything looks good. I select them all to update and something happens. And I have to fix that and then I have to uh, update them one at a time. So, so it's finicky sometimes. I'm going to have this I'm going to have these updates going for a moment and then I'll have the latest version of my plugins. The reason I want updates is because they often solve security issues. Uh, someone discovers a vulnerability in a plugin or a theme and then if you have an old version of the plugin or theme, someone could abuse that and hack your site. So the plugin updates are, are important. And as a matter of fact, just last week, one of the, my favorite plugins, one that's, you, that's used like uh, millions of times in the world, the um, Yoast SEO plugin, the one that I recommended in this class actually, they revealed that they had some sort of vulnerability, so they released an update right away, version 1.74. And um, there it is right there actually, that's one of my updates. So that's why you do want to do your updates for security issues. And sometimes the updates also give you extra features. So that's another reason why you might want to do updates. Mine seem to have updated without problem. You notice at the end it says disabling maintenance mode. So I'm going to just return back to the dashboard home here. So there I was just talking about uh, using Duplicator to make a backup and then making updates of your of your plugins and so forth. Those are two useful things to do, maintenance to do, maybe once a month or so if you want to um, put a timetable on it. So any questions on this so far? 
you mentioned that you had a press the reset button so it so it updates the numbers for for naming the oh yeah over here yeah under duplicator create new sometimes like that it's remembering the old date let's say tomorrow I wanted to make another duplicator update a backup it might still remember yesterday's date so I'm just saying that here I reset it just so that it creates one with today's date all right so the main thing I wanted to talk about is um, you've got your your WordPress site at wordpress.com which still exists if you want to bring it over let me talk about that a moment but I kind of recommend start over with this brand new site you have a brand new clean WordPress this will give you a chance to kind of remember what we did previously you know a month ago you can watch the videos again about how we set up our WordPress site in the beginning and then try it again because you'll probably have to do it more than once and if you get practice with this that's better but let me show you how to import it if you wanted to import on the left side if you go look at tools hover over tools and select import so if I go to import there it says what kind of site would you like to import and notice we've got a bunch of them you might have had a blogger site before you could import that to a new modern WordPress site. You might have even had LiveJournal, which is even older than Blogger, I think. Um, and if you're over on Tumblr, you can do the same. And then you've got WordPress. So this WordPress uh, importer will allow you to bring in your old site. I'm going to go ahead and click on WordPress because it's sort of a mini plugin to in to to import your, your your WordPress. So I'm going to go through that. You can do that if you want or not, but I'll just show you what it looks like. I'll select to install now. It'll make a, it'll install a brand new plugin. I have to remember to activate it. And then it says, okay, you're going to import a file from your existing WordPress site. So that means I need to go, I would need to go back to my WordPress.com and then do the opposite there. I would go back to my WordPress.com site and select Tools Export. So from the .com, I would do Export, it would give me a file. I would come to my brand new GoDaddy WordPress and select Import, choose the file, and it'll basically copy your site over as best as possible from the old site to your new site. And what, I be, what I mean by as best as possible is that it might not be able to copy everything. For example, the theme. The theme might be a theme that only is available at WordPress.com. And maybe the whole point of you wanting to import things over is because you wanted that theme. So you might not be able to use that theme on your new site. So the procedure is all basically here. You export from the old site and then you import to the new site. And like I said, I'm not going to do it. I, I'm going to start over with a new site. I sort of recommend for you as well. Later on, in a few more lessons and homeworks and so forth, we're going to continue to work on our site. You can work on it as, as you want. You can work on bringing it back to the level that it was when we left it behind. right? You had that, uh, that home screen, you had a blog, and so forth. Maybe you might want to work on that just to get practice with it, watch the previous video and so forth. Practice making a post and a page, you can always remove them. And changing your theme and so forth, but um, I'm gonna say uh, for the moment I'll leave it up to you uh, to make your WordPress site a little bit more your site, not that it's the same not that it's the blank kind of site that we all have. It's maybe up to you to change your color and add your text and so forth for practice.
So have you, as you've used WordPress, either on .com or your own site, have there been any questions coming up that you might have had? Uh, I'll take some question and answers for the moment, and then we'll move on. But any general questions on anything we've talked about in the class so far, WordPress specific, maybe? Right, so we're going to shift gears over to talk a little bit about social media then.